This is the My Sister Said podcast, and I'm your host, Uche Amaneke. If you know me from my YouTube channel, you know that I'm all about that active faith life. But I also know trusting God with your Sunday through Saturday and your eternity, it takes practice. So in this podcast, I am diving deeper. We are going to be talking about everything from spiritual abuse to a biblical view on twerking. Yes, our faith is not just religion, it's real life. This is what community looks like, people. I'll do my nails during this episode and see if I can control my fidgeting. My little ADHD has been freaking out today, so see if I can just control my fidgeting by doing something else instead of just concentrating on talking. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. And I'll probably do it forever. Okay. Yeah, so I know you read the title, okay? And I really got excited about this because I feel like I had like a polyphony, which is just an epiphany said incorrectly by me. Eh. Um, So I can just kind of start from the beginning of how I kind of got to this point because it's like, I'm excited about it. I just had a really great conversation with one of my my new friends, actually, from this um, podcast. Um, Her name's Kylie. Super cute. They were a sweet girl. Um, we were just talking because she was talking about how um, she was kind of worried about her 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 and her relationship with her boyfriend. And um, there's like you know that passage in the, the little statement in the Bible that says, you know, don't put a stumbling block in front of you know your brother or a sister, whatever in Christ. So it's like she's like, oh, I don't want to put a stumbling block stumbling block in front of anybody, you know, in regards to what she wears. She's like, I like to wear leggings. <laughs> me too and I don't really necessarily usually cover my butt and I'm like is that okay she wants to make sure she's doing what she can to be you know just I guess just honor God with her body and with whatever decision she's making okay so um Kylie is super interesting now she's really awesome she's she thinks differently than me and uh, she's one of those people who likes apologetics. Like, just telling her something is not going to convince her. She needs to, like, really work through it. She loves just to um, talk through things and ask questions and just really get to the root of things. And so we basically, by the end of our conversation, we were just like, all the research that we did and the conversation that we had, we were like, um, I don't think, like, nakedness is a sin. Like, it's just... It doesn't make any sense. And I think we need to stop seeing our bodies, especially women, because we're usually, you know, our bodies are policed a lot, seeing our bodies as a stumbling block. Okay. Um, So let me just start from the beginning so that you can kind of understand how I got to this point and how we just kind of, I'm really content, but this is going to be a couple parts because we did talk about what it looks, what modesty looks like. Um, We talked about um, what our obligation is as Christians in regards to clothing and clothing choices. And so... But first, we're going to start with the whole nakedness is a sin thing. And that's super important. Okay. So first, I want to welcome you to the podcast. <laughs> my name is Uche. And this is my sister said podcast. We just want to talk about earth urn. Earth urn. Okay. So I'm going to be painting my nails in this color limousine from Essie. I like it. So we'll see what, how this goes. Okay. All right. So. Okay. So we're going to start with the conversation I had with my girl Kai. Okay. We're just going to start with nakedness just from the beginning. So we're going to take it back to our home, right? Being like not having any clothes on, you know, taking a shower or whatever, getting ready in our own house. So we asked ourselves, okay, so, um, <laughs> so when we're home alone, naked in our room, is my body sinful? Okay. So, you know, you're not really alone. You know, God's every, God's with us or whatever for praying and for in our shower or whatever. Our, is our body sinful? Okay. And as we're sitting there, we're like, okay, no, right? Like, no, we're, our body's just our body. We're, we're just chilling um, in our body, <laughs> you know, all beautifully, wonderfully made or whatever. And then, so we're like, okay, so when does our body turn from just a chill, you know, being ours, just us existing? When does it turn into a stumbling block? Okay, what, what's changed from that point of view, right? And so we were just talking through, we're like, okay, so what's changed? All right, so when we're talking about lust, let's start there. It's if a man is looking at our body, a man that is not our husband is looking at our body, then that's where, um, that's when our 
body can be a stumbling block. So then I was like, okay, I took a step back because I was having a hard time with that. Um, because it's, because when I thought about it, I'm like, that means that my body is a stumbly block depending on who's looking at it. So if no one's looking at it and it's just me, then it's, it's fine. And I was like, well, that's just me. So just my existence in front of another man, that makes my body a stumbling block, you know? Um, it's like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Cause it, I, I was like, I, I refuse to call my body a stumbling block, just my existence. So I decided to kind of step away from the male gaze. Okay. I was like, let me just not think about lust. People usually focus on that in the regards to how women dress, but I was like, let me just step away that. Okay. So I'm, I'm black. So <laughs> I'm like, hmm. well, you can't see me if you can't see me. I'm, I'm black. I'm Nigerian. Um, and so if, you know, someone is a racist, right. Or they have racial prejudices, um, that, they, you know, judge people based on their appearance, the color of their skin, right? Me being black is not a stumbling block. I'm just existing. Because um, it says, don't put a stumbling block in front of your brother, right? Don't put a stumbling block in front of your sister in Christ so they can't, they won't fall. But my existence as a black person, my body, it can't be a stumbling block. This is just who I am. This is how God made me. And so I'm like, not going to apologize. Like, oh yeah, I'm a stumbling block in front of you because, you know, you're racist. And now, of course, and you can see my black skin. Sorry. You know, I'll try to cover that up. Like, no, that doesn't make, that doesn't really make any sense, honestly, not to me at least. And so, and so I had to step away from the male gaze, um, like just for the male gaze as my reference point for being a stumbling block to someone in regards to my existence, like just my body itself. Um, honestly, clothes or unclothed clothes, because uh, <laughs> we kind of went, we just talked about this one thing. I was like, cause I was talking to her, I was like, well, what if someone has a foot fetish, right? It's like, I'm going to wear me some sandals. I don't like, I have, I'm going to wear sandals. I don't want to wear boots that cover my entire foot. Like, is that a, like someone has a foot fetish? Am I provoking them because they see me in sandals? I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Like they have the issue, not me. This is none of my business. I'm just existing. So, um, so, and then here's a biblical example. What I really, really was like, ah, Okay, so this is probably the most like interesting little passage in the Bible to me for this conversation. Okay, so whenever Adam and Eve were, you know, in the garden and they had taken and eaten from the tree, right? So um, after they'd eaten, they, um, there's something that like happened. There was a change that happened. Okay. And so what's really important is, um, so I'm going to read to you Genesis 3, 9 through 11. Okay, so it says, um, it's going to be the um, New King James Version. Okay. So it says, Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? You know, he knew. Oh, savage. <laughs> and he says, um, So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. And so I hid myself. And this is the verse that really gets to me. Um, I heard it for the first time in church, like really took it in and said, um, it says, and he said, that's God said. And then God said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree, which I commanded you that you should not eat? And so those like those six, those six words, who told you you were naked? That says a lot. And um, if you know anything about God, like God cannot be in the presence of sin. Um, and before the fall, like, you know, God walked with Adam, God walked with Eve. And so it's like, okay, so they were naked, hella naked the entire time with God in the garden. So, and that wasn't like a shame. What I see is that it looks like since the beginning of time, beginning of time, since Adam and Eve, the only ones who ever found nakedness sh shameful or thought of nakedness as a sin or so something wrong was human beings. The only ones. Adam was like, we were ashamed, but he was hella naked at the beginning. It even says it, literally it says it. Yeah, so it's Genesis 2, 25 says, um, where is that? Yeah, so it says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. And so like literally since the beginning of time, the only ones who found nakedness shameful, is not that, not that nakedness was shameful, the only ones who found it shameful were human beings. And the only time they found nakedness shameful was after the fall, after Adam sent for Eve and decided to eat that fruit. So yeah, like 
that's why I'm like, I, I am not going to, and, and honestly, that's probably a good reason for us not to see our bodies as a stumbling block because when they were in the presence of God, like God never said, I'm ashamed of you for being naked. Never said that once. It was only man's thought that is. And even throughout scripture, when people do bring, bring, um, scripture about like, you know, shame and nakedness, it's not God saying this. It's understanding that man thinks that nakedness is shameful. And let me tell you something else. This is very, very, this is, this is actually reiterated later in, in Samuel. Um, one of my favorite verses that we're actually going to go into like next time, next time we talk about this, um, the part two. And so, yeah, and then I noticed a couple of things. All right, just real fast. So, and then, okay, it's not no random, okay? But another thing I noticed was, just another thing that I noticed was that, okay, so, so the tree in the Garden of Eden, it just always existed. The fruit existed in front of Adam and Eve the entire time, right? It was there. Um, God gave them instructions like, hey, that tree, you see it? And they can see it. It's pretty, right? It's cute. But do not eat from that tree. All right, those are the instructions that God gave him, right? So it was always there. His existence wasn't sinful. Um, just as that fact they could see it was not sinful. It was the instruction not to eat from it, right? Like the tree's existence was passive. The fruit's existence was passive. But for Eve to be sitting in Adam too, they had to actively understand that that was not right for them to touch. And then it was their responsibility to abide by God's law, right? Um, so that tree itself was not a stumbling block. Whatever sin was inside them, that covetedness, whatever that was, that they wanted to have, you know, take from that tree, that was the stumbling block. Or actually, you know, Satan's temptation, seducing and saying, oh, is it really that bad? Hmm. Mm, it's not that bad. Go ahead. You know, um, and like enticing her and um, kind of tricking her. So even with Eve too, she enticed Adam. She gave the fruit to him. Like was like, here, take this, eat this. Um, not just it existing. Like Adam has seen it the whole time he was there and didn't touch of it, touch it. But until she like was like, here, take this, actively gave it to him. Um, so that offering of it, you know? So that's like, and that's the original sin. And so it's really interesting to me, it's a little side point, but, you know, reading Genesis and reading the instruction that God gave to Adam and Eve, right? He told them, don't eat from it. Don't eat from the tree. That's it. Um, but whenever, whenever, uh, whenever Eve was talking to Satan as a stake, um, she, he, she told him, oh, I'm told not to eat or touch or will die. And so Satan kind of gotten like a, a leg up on that because she was like, he was like no go ahead, take it. You're not going to die. And so she took it. Oh, and she was fine. Ooh, she was fine. She took it. And, but when she ate from it, that was, you know, the fall, that was a death sentence. Um, but that's interesting to me. It's like those adding on of rules. I'm going to guess that Adam is the one who told her not to touch it. But even though God's only instruction was not to eat from the tree, and I'm just noticing that, like, you know, whenever Christians are talking about the sin of nakedness and how Christians should dress and not, I'm like, well, is that what God said? You're adding rules to things that God did not actually say, you know? Um, and so that's a concern of mine. And that does not lead to a good place because people are like, well, did he didn't actually say that? You know, I just think that it's, I just think that's an interesting part of the story. Um, and that's where my mind went. <laughs> okay. But so, um, so yeah, I think there's a difference between like the difference between someone being passive um, and something existing in a passive state, and then someone being actively, you know, pursuing that and placing that temptation in front of someone and saying, "Yeah, take of this," you know. Um, that's just something I noticed. So uh, honestly, no, so, uh, I do not believe. I mean, God's words, God word, God's word does not verify the myth that. that um, nakedness on its own is a sin and that our bodies just existing can be a stumbling block for somebody. And I think that's important to understand, especially when it comes to, um, I'm a little, sorry, a little trigger warning, trigger warning. Um, like, so, so especially when it comes to like sexual assault in those instances and people blaming someone's nakedness or what someone was not wearing on someone stumbling, like, well, what were you wearing? 
But honestly, it's not, it's not, first of all, that's prejudice, which is not sexy, which is not of God. And then second of all, it's just like someone else's sin, whatever is in them, that covetedness, like wanting something that wasn't theirs to take. Um, that is what was a stumbling block. They're, the person's existence is not a stumbling block. God actually placed them on this earth. So no, I don't think that's, that's not very, um, what's it called? Fitting and um, it's not aligned with God's word to think of nakedness and existence of our bodies as a sin, as a stumbling block for someone else. So, but we're gonna go into the next part, which is how are we supposed to think of modesty? How are we gonna think of modesty in regards to honoring God with our bodies? All right, here we are. All right, that's it. Mm, thank you so much. Mm, bye.